Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We are now here on our invitation to the squadron chaplain, Captain Justin Elder. We would like to welcome the official party, the Governor of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice, the Adjutant General of the West Virginia National Guard, Major General James Boyer, the Adjutant General of the North Carolina National Guard, Major General Gregory Luss, the former Adjutant General of the West Virginia National Guard, Major General Retired Alan Tackett, 77th Troop Command Brigade Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Tanya McGonigal, State Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major James Jones, North Carolina Senior Enlisted Leader Army, Command Sergeant Major Russell Price, 60th Troop Command Brigade Commander, Command Sergeant Major Diana Satan, and Regional Coordinator for the U.S. Senator Joe Manchin, Brian Aloise. Additionally, we'd like to thank uh, distinguished guests, friends, family, members in uniform, and our former squadron commanders and Command Sergeant Major. Welcome to the first 150th Squadron Cavalry Regiment Yellow Ribbon Deployment Event. Today we bid farewell to our soldiers who are deploying to Kuwait. Over the past two years, the squadron has conducted numerous training requirements to include two training center rotations at Fort Bliss, Texas and Fort Irwin, California. These rotations provided the squadron with tough, realistic training to prepare the unit for combat operations abroad. Our soldiers will continue their training in the months to come to prepare for Operation Spartan Shield rotation. The mission will be to sustain theater readiness, conduct unified land operations, and support partner nations in making the region safer. At this time, Major General Boyer will give us his remarks and introduce Governor Justice. I think is important to point out is this is not the first time the 201st or the 150th have deployed since 9-11. Actually three, this will be the third for each. But if you go back to the lineage of the 150th and the 201st, deployments have gone on in those organizations since 1775 and 1778, respectively. The first formation of the Continental Army included the militia company that later became the 201st Field Artillery West Virginia National Guard. And in 1778, Greenbrier County became a county 
and then the Commonwealth of Virginia. And with that stood up the first militia in that county in 1778, which is the lineage of the 150th Cavalry Regiment. So your lineage has been doing the nation's business since before we were a state. So we greatly appreciate what you do. It's now my pr uh, privilege and my pleasure to introduce someone who I've had the opportunity to work with now for over two and a half years, who has been an absolute advocate for us in the National Guard, not just for what we do militarily, but for what we do in our state emergency missions and other things, as well as for our families, and maintain things like our state tuition reimbursement and our Mountain Air Challenge Academy program, and someone who is a strong advocate and comes from uh, a family, his father, and I'm sure he'll tell you about it, was an aviator in World War II. So the family knows the sacrifice of the military. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to introduce to you our governor and our commander in chief of the West Virginia National Guard, the Honorable Jim Justice. teleprompter. I don't speak from a lot of notes. I speak from my heart because I tell you the truth. You know, uh, I think about my dad an awful lot, but I also think about my mom. I think about my granddad on my mom's side who never had indoor plumbing. I think about him standing and saying, you know, at one time, a family of 10 kids. At one time, three of them overseas in war at one time. Now, let me tell you, my dad was an Air Force captain. I can positively promise you from the bottom of my soul in every way, shape, form, or fashion that you have an incredible group young men and women. You have an unbelievable general that works with me all the time. So many, many people that I could stand here and thank. I saw you respond to the worst disaster that I have ever been associated with, the flood in 2016. I've seen what you've done in perpetuating the RISE program so we can get the victims back in homes. I've called several families that lost loved ones. I absolutely cannot say enough to the fact of your bravery, your honor, your courage. I mean, these families, I know, I know just a portion of what their feelings are. I know they're worried. I know they're concerned. And I know they love you. But I also know they're really proud. At the end of the day, this is so simple for me. It's just as simple as mud. We owe everything we have, everything we have to you. And I mean that sincerely from the very bottom of my heart. I will do anything at any time, in any way, shape, form, or fashion I can to help. Anything that I can do to help, I'll be there to try to help. Now look, I won't run, because I can't run. I'm too fat. I grew another body later on in my life. At one time, I was actually skinny, and I had brown hair. But since that time, my legs have gotten pretty tough. But I will tell you again just this. I may not come running, but I'll come walking really fast. 
I salute you in every way. Your courage is unbelievable. And the families, we will do any and everything we can to help and look after them at all costs, at all times. Godspeed to every one of you. And every last one of you, get back home as quickly as you possibly can and know, know in your heart that every waning moment that you're there, you're there for all of us. And absolutely, from with every fiber in me, we love you, we appreciate you, God bless and thank you for giving me the honor to be here with you today. God bless you. Thank you. We know you guys want to spend a lot of time with family and lots of things. We've got one more person that uh, came a good distance to speak to you today. Uh, someone who's been a friend of mine for a number of years. He took the 30th Brigade to Iraq in 2009 and 2010 as the Brigade Commander. Uh, he's my counterpart. Uh, we came in together as Adjutant General about nine years ago. Nine long years ago, right, Greg? And uh, he is a great advocate for National Guardsmen in North Carolina, but also uh, his family grew up in West Virginia, so he's got a special place in his heart for the 150th. Uh, my good friend, the Adjutant General of North Carolina, Greg Lusk. Governor Justice, it's an honor to be here with you today, and Mr. Justice as well. It is an absolute honor to be here with the uh, Commander-in-Chief of the West Virginia National Guard. My great friend over there, General Allen Taggett, so good to see you again today, sir, as well. And um, as well as Jim Hoyer, the Adjutant General of the great state of West Virginia, West by God, Virginia, excuse me. He corrects me every time. I said, uh, my honor to be here. First, greetings from the flatlands just south of the mountains and a little bit east of the Appalachians from North Carolina. It's good to be with you. But he said, I've got a lot of West Virginia blood that runs through my veins, and there's no doubt about that. The mother and father, both from this great state. Um, I ended up in North Carolina because my dad decided to join the Marine Corps for some reason, and he retired out of Camp Lejeune. That's how I got there. But anyway, uh, West Virginia has a calling for me. And the 150th has an even more special place in my heart than that. I've been with the, uh, the 30th Brigade for a predominant amount of my career. And I remember that first time with the Mad Dogs and, and some of the 150 that showed up at the National Training Center back in 2003 and they've been with us side by side every step of the way, just invaluable teammates. Unfortunately, we've, we've sacrificed together, we've bled together, we've lost loved ones and we've lost teammates throughout, the, throughout these uh, experiences. But I just want to leave you with two quick sentiments. One, we realize that, one is I've talked to a few of you walking around here today, one, we've got to get this party started because we know that the only time we're going to get to the end and cleaning up is to get this thing started. But we also recognize this is a bittersweet moment because we're about to have a very long separation from loved ones and very special events in families' lives that's going to occur while all these soldiers are deployed. We realize that everybody in this room and probably perhaps countless others that are not in this room serve on this, in this organization just as much as the one sitting here in uniform. Yeah, your sacrifice and your service it's not something that's lost on any of us. It takes every single person in here to not only join, serve, but to also support somebody that is serving. And as I said before, you sacrifice right alongside each and every one of them. And the other sentiment I want to leave you with is simply the fact that if it was easy, we'd contract this out with somebody else. And we know that. Okay? So just going back to getting this party started for just a brief moment. Each and every one of you I know that you realize, you know, our, our militia history and our heritage and our lineage, as General Hoyer was describing, is something unique. It transcends the, the founding of our republic even before the Declaration of Independence was ever signed. And for many years, for centuries now, the militia has stood up and answered the call to duty whenever that call has come in, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of whether it's convenient or inconvenient, Regardless of whether your family or your loved ones are potential victims, you left them behind and you wouldn't to answer the call to attend to the needs of others. But once again, this call has come in and once again you have answered that call. 
And each and every one of you can now proudly take your place in that very long line of National Guardsmen that trans that, whose heritage and lineage transcends all the way back to the founding of our republic. Each and every one of you should take a great deal of pride in knowing that your name will be placed in that long line with honor and distinction. Unlike the previous two deployments where we've been sending, off, uh, sending folks off to war, your mission is going to be a little different this time. In those previous deployments, there were combat missions. We knew exactly what it was and we trained for them. We got ready for it. This one's even more difficult than that. Your mission is to go over there to prevent war. Have no mistake about it that in that potential, in that particular area of the world, we have a lot of national interest in what happens in the Middle East. And while we may hear on the headlines about the Iranians and other maligned influencers that, that reside in that area, don't forget that there's Chinese, there's Russians, and other national actors come to play. You're going to be on the forefront of each and every one of that in order to keep keep the shots and the rounds from firing and to preserve peace and stability in the area until a diplomatic or more of a, a long-term solution can be resolved. Therefore, you have to be prepared for the entire spectrum of operations. And you've had a little bit of test to test that out and to train that over these last couple of years. And quite frankly, getting back to my other part, if it was easy, we would have contracted it out. You have been road hard, you have been put up wet. Going down to Fort Bliss, Texas was no easy task. And we know that going out in the middle of the Mojave Desert in the middle of the summer was not an easy task, but everybody else is taking trips to the beach or perhaps finding another place in the mountains to go to and enjoy their summers. You were there on the front line sacrificing and serving. That again is not lost on each and every one, on anybody here at all. I'm absolutely proud, I'm absolutely honored to, to bring you greetings on behalf of North Carolina and also the 30th Armored Brigade Combat Team, who I know will not be successful without the contributions of the 1st to 150th Armored Reconnaissance Squadron. God bless each and every one of you. Godspeed. This will come to pass. It will soon be in the rearview mirror. We know how fast time flies, and anybody that's close to my age knows how fast time flies. You know, this will start soon, and it'll be over with just as fast, and you'll be back here with your chest up, puffed up high, your back even straighter, and even be beaming with more pride of what you've accomplished than you can possibly imagine at this time. Godspeed, good luck. Look forward to seeing you when you get home. You'll be successful. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction from the second chapter of the band chaplain, Major Dave Jones, playing in the honor song and the departure. As I pray according to my faith tradition, I encourage you to join me in yours. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we, we stand in awe in the presence of our heroes. We are truly thankful for the willingness that these men and women of the 1st and 150th took when they raised their hands and took an oath to protect and defend us. And now that call has been given, and here they stand today equipped and prepared to go. They are ready. But now, God, we ask for an extra, special touch of your protection upon them. Keep them safe as they complete this mission and bring them back to us at the appointed time. I pray for those who wait at home for them. The many days they may go without hearing from them, many worries they're going to have upon their hearts, the many things that are going to happen in their lives. Father, I just pray for an extra measure of peace and strength. For the leadership, God, I ask for your discernment, your wisdom as they make sometimes very difficult decisions that involve the lives of our sailors, our soldiers, excuse me. Father, we thank you for those that you put in those places. Now, God, as we go, we want to go with excitement and joy and thankfulness in what's about to happen, looking forward to the day of their return. So, God, we ask you to bless our country, bless our great state of West Virginia. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the first 150th Cavalry Squadron Yellow Ribbon Deployment event. There will be dinner served at 15, 515 in the Coliseum area for all the soldiers and families. We'd like to thank the members of the Yellow Ribbon and Family Readiness Groups for their service and support for today's events. Have a good evening. Test, test, test. He already broke. I can 